Hey everybody, I wanted to read this book with you, The Sound of Silence. Now, we're going to actually be making some music in this book, so I want you to get ready first. Um, if you have some paper towel tubes, there's actually a part where this is really going to give us the sound we want. Now, if you don't have any paper towel tubes, you can just tap your hands on the ground or whatever. Um, I think you make a pretty cool sound like this. So our part with these, if you want to pause it for a second, get your paper towel tubes, you're going to go like this. So just da 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 Da, 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 da. And then if you can let it bounce like we practice, you know, keep it nice and loose, you can make them bounce. So we have da 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 da, da, da. So that's the paper towel tube part. Now, later on, this week we've been talking about the synthesizer. So we're going to use the synthesizer sound. Now, I took out the keyboard and I put this micro sequencer. So it keeps the same thing going over and over again. Now, I can change the sound. as we go. Now the rhythm that you play with this is going to look like this. So you can clap that with your hands or if you have an instrument or something you want to play you can do that again. So let's see if you can do it. Here we go. Keep that going. Can you keep with it? Okay. That's it. So when those sounds come up, and I'll show you what to do, and I want you to play along with it. So this is the sound of silence. Little Yoshio wiggled with anticipation. Three, two, one. He threw open the front door. The sounds of the sweet city swirled all around him. Tokyo was like a symphony hall. Yoshio listened to the sound of his boots squishing and squashing through the puddles, and the tiny raindrops pattered on his umbrella. The sound of his giddy giggles made him giggle more. Suddenly, Yoshio heard the strangest sound, high then low, squeaky and vibrating, and amazing. It was a koto player, carefully tuning her instrument. Then the koto player played. The notes were twangy and tuneful. They tinkled Yoshia's ears. When the song finished, Yoshia said, Sensei, I love sounds, but I've never heard a sound like that. The koto player laughed, and it sounded like the metal bell that swayed in the wind in Mama's garden. Sensei, Yoshio said, do you have a favorite sound? The most beautiful sound, the koto player said, is the sound of Ma. Silence. Silence, Yoshia asked, but the koto player just smiled, a mysterious smile, and went back to playing. Yoshia bowed to the koto player and ran to school. Where can I find silence? Yoshia wondered as he listened to the thwack, the thwack of his boots on the pavement. He listened for it through the school day, but there was always some kid making noise. At recess, the sun came out and Yoshia went to the quietest place he knew, the bamboo groove at the edge of the playground. Now this is where we're going to hear our bamboo sound. So get out your paper towel, tool, your paper towel rolls. Here's the sound of the bamboo. But even there, the bamboo made a teka teka sound as the wind banged the stalks together. He closed his eyes and heard the swish, swish, swish of the sound making the leaves talk. It was beautiful, but it wasn't silence. Walking home from school, Yoshia listened hard. He could hear the horns of buses and whoosh of bullet trains and the beep, beep, beep of the traffic lights. This is the sound of the train. And then you're gonna See if you can keep that going. But no silence. You know, she has knew so many different sounds, loud and soft, sudden and soothing, but silence? Where? With sounds. Now, it wasn't in the dining room where there was always the sound of chopsticks and slurping and chewing and swallowing. Silence wasn't in the bath where even his toes made noise and little droplets of water kept dripping off his nose. That night Yoshia tried to stay up late to catch the sounds while his family slept. But his eyes got heavy and then heavier and soon the sound of a distant radio became part of his dreams. The next morning Yoshia woke up to his neighbor's dog barking and barking and oh no! He had missed the silence. 
Oshia walked to school early. His sisters whizzed by on their way to the park, screeching Yoshia's name. Where was silence? Yoshia heard the creak of the school gates as he pulled them open. No one was at school yet. He put on his inside shoes and listened as they shuffled on the shiny floor. The classroom felt different without anyone in it. He sat at his desk by the window and pulled out a book. He loved this story. As he read, he forgot where he was. Suddenly, in the middle of a page, he heard it. No sound of footsteps, no people chattering, no radios, no bamboo, no code was being tuned. In that moment, Yoshia couldn't even hear the sound of his own breath. Everything felt still and silent, peaceful, like the garden after it snowed, like feather-stuffed futons drying in the sun. Silence had been there all along. It had been there between the thumps of his boots when he ran, when the wind stopped for just a moment in the bamboo groove, at the end of his family's meal, when everyone was happy and full, after the water finished draining from his bath, before the Koto player's music began and hovering in the air right after it ended. And it was between and underneath every sound. And it had been there all along. Ma. Silence.